This is Pun Frugal Streamer. I hope you're having a great day. And I wanted to talk about Voice Meter Banana. Um, there's some great news coming out uh, tomorrow, 7 o'clock Eastern. VB Audio will re be releasing the open beta of Voice Meter Potato. This is the newest version of Voice Meter. Uh, so it will have a lot of functionality, a lot of new functions that we don't have in Voice Meter Banana. But overall, it works the same way. So I wanted to do a quick overview of Voice Meter Banana since we have it here, so that when you see Voice Meter Potato, you're not super overwhelmed by what you're seeing because essentially everything is the same. They've just changed and added some you know neat, neat little gadgets that we don't have. Uh, and essentially, voice meter is one big function, and that is strictly mixing. Okay, so let's go through the UI real quick, and let's talk about the layout, because uh, it essentially is just a repeat of one basic function. All right, so here is a voice meter. And so what we have here is the UI, and you see all these buttons, you see all these sliders, and you're going, what in the world is this? And it is a strictly a multi-channel mixer is all it is. So all these inputs right here are, or all these channels, I should say, are inputs. Okay, so they're separated into two sections. You have three hardware inputs here, and you have two virtual inputs. Okay, so what's the difference between hardware inputs and virtual inputs. Well, hardware inputs are actually physical devices like a microphone or a webcam with a microphone or um, a headset with a USB that has a microphone plugged, you know, built into it. Um, any analog uh, th device that you plug into your sound card that you can input sound into your computer with. That is a lot of physical devices. Okay. Also, it also in, uh, includes virtual audio cables which Windows looks at as a physical device. So you can have any of those devices, one of the, one device per channel right here. And so you have three different uh, audio devices that you can run simultaneously here. So for instance, I have mine is my microphone here, which you can see the VU meter going up and down, right? You have uh, here, I have a virtual audio cable, and you can click and see all the devices that you can select here. Okay, this is personally for me. Um, each person will have a different configuration based on all the devices they have. But, um, you know, the, and you can also plug in what we call V band, which I'll talk about here later. But so that is your hardware inputs. Now you have two of these virtual inputs. Now this is like software audio. So uh, Windows default playback audio can come to either one of these channels. Uh, you can also, any software uh, input where you can go and configure and route uh, audio with, you can send to one of these virtual devices. Uh, you know, both, you only have two of these. And so normally what I do is for this left one, the voice meter VAIO, I set this in Windows as my default playback device. That way, any Windows audio comes through this channel. That includes gameplay audio, okay? And usually, I kind of try to leave this one open if I can and use it uh, as a for V-band, which, again, I'll talk about here in a, in a second. All right, so that's your inputs. Now, likewise, with your inputs, you also have outputs, and they are on this right side right here, okay? And you, of course, have five outputs, again, you have three hardware outputs. Those are your A outputs. And you have two virtual outputs, which are your B outputs. Okay, so A1, A2, and A3 are all separate channels of hardware outputs. Again, hardware outputs are physical devices. So sound cards, speakers, uh, HDMI cables, you know, those type of things. And virtual outputs, again, are software. So your default record devices in Windows, I have set to one of these virtual outputs. In my case, it's the B2, okay, which I set as my virtual output default record device. That way I can send anything I want to the B2 if I want it recorded, one of these hardware inputs or virtual inputs, I can send it to B2 and it will record it, okay? So this is um, basically how it works. So that's it. So your inputs here, you got five of them, you got five outputs. Now, each of the inputs, you see the buttons that run down the side of the slider here, okay? You can set this input to go to a specific channel. So in here, I have the microphone going to the B2 virtual output. 
and you can see the VU meter that corresponds to my microphone right here that corresponds to the VU meter here so that you can tell that this is actually patching my microphone audio over okay likewise you can send anything here like I got this set selected to A1 which is the output to my sound cards which this is actually my headphones that I'm wearing right now okay like if I wanted to send this alert to my headphones I could also select A1 I have a my head, uh, virtual inputs here going to my headphones that I can hear. So any of these channels, I'm listening to all four of these. If any sound comes into any of these, I'll hear them in my headphones. Okay. Now, that's about the only thing that I would recommend you doubling up on here. Everything else I would recommend you not doubling up because now you would be introducing a possible sound loop. Okay. And a lot of people have been complaining about that. They're like, oh, I keep hearing myself talking. Uh, it's probably because you got a sound loop going on. So, uh, but yeah, typically I'll have um, multiple of these channels going to my headphones so I can hear like my alerts for my uh, stream come into this so I can hear them. Um, comms from people talking to me in TeamSpeak or Discord comes in here. Uh, the game audio so I can listen to it. Uh, any of the like maybe Spotify or something I have set going to this virtual input here, I can listen to it. You know, so that's just kind of how it works, and it's really nice. Uh, so that's uh, how you do that. So like I said, you just have to turn this button on like that. If it'll be blue if it's on, it'll be faded gray if it's not, and um, it's that simple. Okay, so you have some functionality up here. Now this is a. Uh, has a few different functions in it by right by clicking on it. So this first function here is actually the one probably most people will use. Uh, and this is a basically an EQ. Okay, so you notice all of these have EQs, and the hardware inputs are a little different, a little more functional. Uh, but you can see this changes the sound of the mic as I slide this left and right. Um, likewise, you can brighten it by moving it up. You know, so I actually like mine to be about right there. Uh, kind of gives you a nice, uh, gives you a little reverb. Um, you know, kind of a little less. It cuts out some of the high end and gives you a little more low end. I like it a lot. Anyway, so that's basically where I have my microphone set. Um, if you if you right click on it. You have modulation that you can add. I'm not going to go changing this because I don't like using modulation for my microphone. Um, but it gives you kind of a wavy kind of sound. And then if you right click again, then you have uh, positioning that you can, you know, go left or right. You can bring my microphone forward or back on the sound stage, that sort of thing. Uh, but most people will probably use this uh, EQ for your hardware inputs. Likewise, with the virtual inputs, you do have basic EQing here for treble, um, bass, and mid-range. And then each of the hardware inputs have a basic compressor, a, one, a, a single um, effect uh, compressor, and also a noise gate that you can uh, adjust here, which is kind of nice. If you're having background noise, you can actually use this noise gate to cut some of the background noise off, which I'll actually stop talking, and you'll see my microphone settle out, and it'll have some background noise here, and then I'll turn the noise gate up, and you'll see it fade out. So, yeah, I mean, that's a noise gate. I mean, it's basic functionality is built in right here. Um, and notice you have that for each of the three um, hardware inputs. So, yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, uh, these virtual inputs here, they have uh, basic uh, panning left and right and fade front and rear. Uh, you have EQ here on each of your outputs. So these are post-fade outputs. Um, you can EQ each of these channels. Uh, you turn it on by uh, left-clicking. You configure it by right-clicking on it. And uh, you could turn each of these bands on or off. And as you see here, I've got this cut up for a little uh, bass, bringing up the bass a little bit. Um, if you like, uh, if you're lacking some treble, uh, you can come down to this side or just one of these channels to bring your treble up a little bit. Uh, likewise with the mid-range, okay? But uh, it's really simple. Um, frequency adjust here. This is the uh, dB level that you want to increase it. And the Q is the bandwidth. So uh, uh, a low Q is a really wide wave. 
Uh, like I said, I'll turn it back on here. You can see how wide that is. And as I increase it, you can see how it narrows around the center frequency of 50, about 53 hertz there. And you could move it, you know, left or right as you, you know, as necessary. So very simple. Um, it works good. And um, if you're having a sound issue where you need to either boost or, or fade something, then you can, that's what you can use this for. And it's really nice. Uh, let's see, you got mono here, um, you can go mono on each of these channels, likewise you can do the same thing with inputs, um, you can go solo, this is a master, uh, master controller, you can mute each of these channels, uh, it's just a basic mixer, uh, all the basic functionality of a mixer is there, now there's some cool stuff added to this that, uh, really is nice, especially if you like doing podcasts or you like doing, uh, raw commentary, uh, you can record commentary or podcasts on this little tape recorder, so if you click on this, you can set the record path, okay, to your hardware or to your uh, hard drive. If you right-click on it, you can actually set the devices you want this to record to, okay. Likewise, you can see the target directory here. Again, you click on it. You can uh, set that. You can set the file type. You got a couple different options here. You can set the bit rate. You can change the uh, resolution, either 16 or 24 bit. You can set how many channels you got uh, up to 7.1. Um, this does support the whole the mixer does support full 7.1 surround you can also change the bit rate okay you can do some playback gain uh, you can do play on load I mean all these stuff so right now I have set to record post fader outputs okay so these guys here and I can select which one I want if I want to do uh, inputs I can record inputs and it's that easy um, and then it's just a matter of hitting the play button or the record button and I'm now recording what I'm talking about right now very simple and it saves it in the format that you have selected there so it's really cool okay the last thing I want to talk about real quick uh, for main function overview is well actually there's two things but let's talk about VBAN because this is really important this is what makes voice meter uh, really really good okay because this really takes it beyond just a basic mixer okay so VBAN Okay, by turning VBAN on, which you see the button here, if you left click on it, you can turn it off, or if you uh, like that, or you turn it back on by right clicking on it again, you can set up up to eight outputs coming off of the mixer, or you can bring in 10 inputs. So incoming streams is 10, outgoing is eight. Okay, and as you can see here, you can select any of the five um, output channels. Okay. You can name it whatever you want to name it, okay? You can also set the IP address. Now, you see here, this is the IP address of my gaming PC. Likewise, on my streaming PC, which I also have voice meter installed on, uh, which is which is necessary if you want to do a dual PC streaming configuration with voice meter. you got to have it installed on both computers. Um, it will have the IP address there so that then you can go in here and plug it in and, and uh, so that you know where you want to send it to. In the case here, this is my streaming PC is 113. My gaming PC is 112. Okay. Likewise, I have incoming streams coming from my gaming PC or from my streaming PC. Now you can do two things. You can either manually type this stuff in, or if you have VBAN turned on on both of them, you can right click on this channel and then you can select one of the incoming channels that voice meter is detecting through VBAN. So here I have Mike. It's already set up. You just click on it and it'll configure it for you already um, so here is my microphone on my stream pc coming into the gaming pc if you look here this is my gaming this is actually microphone is on my stream pc coming through my internal network through my router through all the ethernet cables into my gaming pc through vban and coming into this a1 channel which if you see here you have destinations you have your three hardware input channels, which is N1, N2, and N3, and your two virtual input channels, so virtual N1, virtual N2. So like I said, I have this going to N number one right here coming in. So it's really cool. Uh, V-band is awesome. It will save you a lot of money. Trust me. Think about having to have a hardware mixer. That could be... Anywhere from 50 up to 
thousands of bucks if you want to get super crazy. But most people between fifty to two hundred dollars, depending on the type of mixer that you get. Then you got to get all the cables that you have to plug for your microphone, all the cables running from your mixer to your different computers. That costs a lot of money. By the time you're done, you're probably you know have invested at least three hundred bucks. Okay, two hundred dollars for a mixer, over a hundred dollars in cables. The interfaces, it's it's just ridiculous. Voice meter of Manano with a V band does all of this for you, and it uses no cables. It uses the one network cable that you're already using anyway to your router, right? And it's digital audio, so there's no analog to digital interface. Everything's digital. It minimizes background noise, any ground looping or any uh, ground noise that you have from analog cables. All that's gone. Okay, because this is all digital. It's ones and zeros. There's no analog anything. So I swear up and down by V-Band. I swear up and down by using Voice Meter Banana because, it's first of all, it's free. You could try it for free. Uh, if, if you like it, it works well for you. You can go back to the website, donate some money. Um, you get a VAC for free. If that works for you, you can go back and download two more for a donation. Um, and it's up to you what you want to donate. So... You can't beat it. It's the best deal on earth, and it's one of the best pieces of software that I think you'll find available for streaming. So, anyway, if you got any questions, let me know. I really just kind of wanted to do a really basic, high-level overview of Voice Meter Banana because tomorrow Voice Meter Potato will come out, and you're going to see two additional hardware inputs. You're going to see one additional virtual input, and then you're going to see an equal number of outputs to match. So it's going to be even bigger. It's going to be even better. And plus, it's going to add some special effects. You're going to have built-in reverb, built-in delay. You're going to have bus selection so that you can automatically, you can have five different board configurations that you can set for different, um, I think it's five, but you'll have different board configurations that by push of a button, it'll reconfigure you know, for a different setting that you want. So if you have a specific setting for a podcast or you have a specific setting for a stream, you can go in, change the bus, and it'll automatically configure it for you, which is just totally awesome. So anyway, I can't wait for Voice Meter Potato, but I wanted to make sure that you understood the basics of Voice Meter Banana, what it does, because, I mean, a lot of people are kind of freaked out about it. I had a guy today who says, yeah, I'm kind of, I, 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 I want to use Voice Meter Banana, but it kind of scares me, you know, kind of weird, because um, it's intimidating. There's a lot of buttons, there's a lot of things, but when you really come down to it, okay, all of these, this is a hardware input, and this that's all these are. They're just repeat. They all work exactly the same. Um, it just gives you flexibility with your audio that you've never had before in Windows, which is just fantastic. So anyway, that is it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, make sure we check out, keep an eye out, because I'm going to get Voice Meter Potato tomorrow. I'm going to be testing it out, and I'm going to have a video out talking about you know, the overview of it, plus any limitations that are with the open beta that may cause some issues with your setup. Um, there are some limitations that I do know about right now. For instance, the virtual input output uh, panel will not be functional. The new version of it will not be functional with this version of Potato. Um, they said that it will be out in September. Okay, so that's just one aspect of it. Uh, the current virtual um, audio cables will work. They are designing a new generation of virtual audio cables that should be better. Um, and that will also come out in September. Okay, But the good thing is, is that the current versions that we now have will work with the potato that will be coming out tomorrow. So anyway, that's it, guys. Have a great week. Uh, if you did like the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more content. I do appreciate the support. And make sure you hit the notification so that you'll know when I have a new video that comes out. Thank you again, guys. This is Pun the Frugal Streamer. Have a great week. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.